true innovation is not happening at the universities. quite an interesting story because when I was 15 uh, I was a total nerd I was totally afraid of talking to people but luckily I got a chance to win a really cool competition and go to study to the US for a year. Over there I graduated from the high school and there I became interested in robotics. So this is actually the beginning of my story. Over there I got into the academic club that uh, was doing really cool robotics projects and uh, I'm not really sure how but uh, we won all the local and national competitions and we had a chance to win the third place at the World Robotics Competition. That gave me the thought, oh, that maybe I can do something more than uh, just programming. After that, when I finished the high school, I went back to the Ukraine and I started the Robotics Academy Club over there. At the time I was 18, so I, I had really tough time, but it was a cool experience uh, looking for the investors and people who would support us so we can go to the European finals, uh, build these robots uh, and have all the stuff we need. We were able actually to do that. We won the third place in the European Robotics Tournament. And after that, I decided that uh, I want to study somewhere somewhere in Europe where the robotics is more advanced. After I came to Zeshu, I also won uh, more than 100,000 100, uh, zloty, which uh, was really good budget to start your own product, start a startup and, and just start doing business. So this is how I started with, uh, with my business. When I was younger, when I was a kid, I really wanted to be the best computer programmer in the world. I wanted to be cooler than uh, Bill Gates. Uh, so this was my dream to become the best uh, software developer ever. Uh, and this is uh, how I started doing programming, then uh, robotics, then winning all these competitions. Because when I was studying in the United States, the mentor of the, our robotics academy club uh, said, he told us one really cool thing, the world belongs to those who show up. This is how I started doing what I'm doing, because uh, I realized that even if you have the best, the most creative, the most innovative, innovative idea in the world, if you don't know how to sell it, if the world doesn't know about it, it worth nothing. That's why when I started winning all the competitions, when I started working in the academic club, I always uh, tried to show as much as possible of what we're doing and sharing uh, this experience, all this knowledge with other people. This is, this is probably why I started winning lots of competitions uh, when I was younger. And as I mentioned, I, I didn't really want to do my own business when I was a kid. But at some time in the past, I realized that the true innovation is not happening at the universities. The real innovation is at the businesses where the entrepreneurs are creating the ideas, are pushing them forward. And uh, the universities are only helping them helping them to work on the really complex, complicated programs, uh, problems because universities usually don't know how to commercialize the product. Uh, when I was around 17 or 18, I decided to, with a friend that we want to do something cool, we want to make the world a better place. So we created, uh, we found out the idea which was really good for marketing but was uh, total shit for business. We wanted to we wanted to save the rhinos in Africa from the poachers using the drones. So that was a beautiful idea. We wanted to see our drones flying all over the Africa, looking for the poachers from their cameras, uh, analyzing what is happening on the terrain, and in case the poacher is detected, send information to the police. But we never thought, where is the business? We just wanted to make this idea and it turned out to be so complex. We needed so much knowledge, money, experience that we were just not able to, to do it. But what we were able to do is to win lots of competitions, generate money, make a really good marketing buzz around us. And this helped us to create Servi Robotics, our first company that is doing a robotics prototype. Servi Robotics is actually a really interesting company. We were looking for the business model for a really long time because uh, I really love doing robotics and everything that is connected with robotics. At the beginning, when I started doing a, a company, I realized that uh, I'm not uh, good at business, so I wanted to learn how to do the business. And the company that is doing services 
it's really good for start because you you, you can learn with the clients you can uh, improve your company with the experience of clients so at the really beginning i decided that i want to create the company that is doing services so i can learn how to do business in order to do the products in the future so Servi robotics at the really beginning was a company that is doing uh, that was doing drones custom drones custom software but as it turned out this wasn't really successful because uh, if you're a small company with uh, no name uh, with a few employees it's really hard to get to the huge corporations and uh, make the research and development for them we started getting to this from the other side and we started doing rapid prototyping not only of the drones but also uh, of the internet of things projects uh, of robotics our first uh, project was actually a robot to monitor the parking lots uh, in the houses and uh, we started doing just small prototypes for different startups different uh, small companies this helped us really a lot to build the name to generate uh, the sales to build the team and after a, a little bit more than a year we were able to actually add more value to what we're doing for the clients uh, instead of only prototyping we were able also to help them to make the low volume production to help them with the certification to help them with patents and right now we are also able to help our clients with the mass volume production of their products in china if they also need software and usually they need software we are also able to help them with creating the software create all the cloud infrastructure uh, help with machine learning algorithms so their devices can learn by themselves and prove all the time so right now we are making a full cycle development process from the idea to the mass volume production actually at the beginning it's really hard to, for you to pay a good salaries for the people so we had quite a big uh, rotation with, with our employees and there were actually a couple of problems. At the really beginning of Servi Robotics I uh, hired the people who were good friends of mine. It was hard for them to change the mindset that yesterday we were drinking beer and today we are working uh, as a team. So it was hard for me to be a leader for them because they didn't, it, it was just hard to cooperate. So a couple, couple of people became really toxic so we had to fire uh, most of the team there was only one employee left and there was a stage of the company where we had a couple products uh, we had deadlines but we didn't have any people so we had to deal uh, with the recruitment process really fast and find the new employees really good and if you are trying to find good software or hardware engineers in a really short time usually uh, you don't get the good ones after that we make a step backward and we started creating the values for the company we started uh, creating a company where it would be comfortable for people to work in there is a really good book written by the ben horowitz called the hard things about the hard things and he's explaining that a company should be the place where it's people are not working for money people are working for pleasure because it's a good place for them to uh, fulfill their dreams and work on the things they love because any company at some some time of its existence is going to have the financial problems only if you're a good company and people are working your company not for money but for the value they are creating this is a good company because it's a really often case where company companies start having cash flow problems and they lose like 70 percent of their employees so we started creating a company we started to look for the products which would be so complicated but so interesting to do that uh, employees at Servi Robotics would work mostly for the products for the innovations innovative things they're doing but not for the money and this was a really good approach because right now we are doing the uh, really complicated products we are working for the multiple kickstarter products we are working for the products for the european space agency we are creating projects for deutsche telecom uh, we're creating pro projects for lots of startups uh, from the abroad from from asia from the united states and the paradox is that only when we started focusing on people in the company uh, so they can feel happy the company started to grow so the most important thing uh, is to focus first of all on people and then on the revenues uh, because uh, if you are looking only for the money uh, it's really hard to, to create a good sustainable business that will last for the for years as I mentioned at the really beginning, Servi Robotics is a really interesting company because uh, it started as a rapid prototyping company 
But right now, the coolest thing is that uh, it has multiple products that uh, it starts selling globally. We are helping uh, companies putting their products on the market, creating the prototypes, helping the mass volume production. But oftentimes we, are all, we also become the partners for them and we create joint ventures where we start selling this together. So Servi Robotics becomes more than of the innovation hub where different uh, technologies and different uh, companies from all over the world using, uh, are working with us to create a really good scalable product and after that we sell them together. So our plan for the next couple of years is to actually focus on the really complex uh, things like drone, uh, transportation with the drones. Right now we are also working on the autonomous drone nest that recharge the batteries into any, in the end drones. The projects we are working right now uh, on are one of the most complex we can reach and the software engineers we are, what we are dealing right now with uh, they are probably one of the best we can possibly find uh, here in Poland and the Ukraine. If I have something to recommend for the startups I would recommend a couple things. First of all, uh, try to be self-funded as long as you possibly can because if you are self-funded you have the decision-making process at your company. You are the CEO and you are deciding how the company is going to operate. The second thing, try, if you are looking for the investor, try to find somebody that is not giving you the money, but is giving, is bringing you the value. Uh, at the time I started the Surfy Robotics, I met people who helped me become an entrepreneur. They, when I made a mistake, they told me what I made wrong and how to fix it. And this probably helped me to uh, get to the place I am today. Probably you should f focus, as I mentioned before, on the relationships. Because at the end of the day, the most important thing is the relationship with the people. And every business, scalable or non-scalable, is built on the relations. So focus on the relations with people, with your employees, with your customers. and then on the revenue, because if you do what you like, the money will always come, but not in the other direction.